The red Evo is yours. What do you mean? What you think? I'm gonna let you roll in the Hyundai? Hyundai's new Veloster N might be this weird looking hot hatch, but we here at Donut noticed it's been causing a little bit of a stir in the car world, and that's because it's good. So I did some digging into this obscure three-door hatchback and why there's an ever-growing following for this car. So today, we are gonna talk about the Veloster N and the technology behind some of the performance features that Hyundai has managed to make what many are calling a driver's car. There's some German DNA under that hood, and we're gonna go find it. A little CSI DNA scrape. Wouldn't it be nice for you to have your own American-made mid-engine supercar? The 2020 Corvette CA is one of the coolest cars released in quite some time. But what's even cooler is that you have a chance to win one and support a great cause at the same time. Our friends over at Amaze are offering you the chance to win a 2020 Corvette Stingray Z51 with taxes and shipping included. And if that isn't enough, they're gonna throw you $20,000 cash money for you to do whatever the heck you want with it. All you have to do is go to omaze.com slash donut and enter for your chance to win. The best part of all this is that every donation supports an organization that means so much to the Donut Media family and I, and that's the Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center. It was their work that helped save the life of our very own James Pumphrey, and for that, we love them over there. So please click the link or go to omaze.com slash donut and donate right now. Thank you so much for your support. We love you guys so much. Now when the engineers were off building this motor, they were told that the big wigs in the end program wanted to give the driver the feeling of a naturally aspirated motor, even though it had a turbo on it. So why? Why would you want that? Well, naturally aspirated engines have a smoother power delivery throughout the entire engine's rev range. And with a turbo engine, it takes some time for those turbos to spool up and it can cause the car to feel jerky when you're accelerating. So they went about tackling this challenge a few different ways. One, by using a twin scroll turbo. Uh, you probably heard of that before. A scroll is just a fancy word for pipe and it's the part of the turbo that is used to transport the exhaust gas from the exhaust manifold to the impeller wheel of the turbo. And unlike a single scroll turbo, if we look inside a twin scroll, it has two exhaust inlets. And those inlets are matched up with an exhaust manifold that is also split. And it's engineered that way for a very special reason. See, car exhaust comes out in pulses that match the firing of each cylinder. And each time an exhaust valve opens, air is pushed out of that cylinder into the exhaust manifold. And the pulses of exhaust coming from the different cylinders can actually overlap. And that's not good because for a brief moment when one cylinder's exhaust stroke is ending and another cylinder's intake stroke is beginning, it can actually cause the exhaust to flow backwards towards the cylinder. And that's not good for a spinning turbo. It creates a pullback effect. But if you were smart and you designed an exhaust manifold that separated the exhaust gases coming out of those overlapping firing cylinders, you wouldn't have to worry about that exhaust pulling the turbo. Now in a four cylinder engine like the Veloster N, it has a firing order of one, three, four, and two. And if we connect the exhaust manifolds of cylinders one and four and cylinders two and three, this means that when cylinder one is finishing up its exhaust stroke, cylinder four is firing. Now the exhaust streams coming from those pairs of cylinders take separate paths to the turbocharger, entering different scrolls. They both spin the same turbo wheel, but the exhaust doesn't mix. So what does all this mean, Jerry, Barry? Well, it means you can get a quicker boost response, you reduce exhaust losses due to mixing, which we just talked about, you increase your turbo efficiency, and you increase power across the entire rev range. Bingo, bango, jango, you're on your way to delivering more of a natural aspirated feel to the driver. So that's the first way they tackle the demand to create a more naturally aspirated engine feel. But wait, there's more. So secondly, they wanted to increase the rev limit. Now, generally speaking, turbocharged engines make more torque lower in the RPM range and naturally aspirated engines, on the other hand, they make more power higher in the rev range. And there's a long explanation on why, but I'll try to simplify it. Now, typically with a smaller turbo setup, you suffer some top end power as the engines enter higher revs. That's because the turbines inside that turbo start to smother the engine. They can't spin any faster, even though the amount of exhaust 
being pumped out is now increased. The funny thing is, is that a turbocharged engine is still likely to be more powerful than its naturally aspirated Robro at high engine speeds. But the shape of that torque curve means you feel the power output decreasing with an increase in engine speed instead of increasing like in a naturally aspirated engine. Because the big rigs wanted the engine to feel more naturally aspirated, they increased the rev range to 6,900 RPMs, smoothing out that power curve by using a bigger, more efficient turbo. Now, side note to my super nerds out there, it's not that turbo engines can't have higher red lines. It's just that the engineers building these engines know that they make most of their power at the lower range. So there's no point really in increasing that limit if you're not getting any returns in regards to performance. Now on the intake side of things, the Veloster N gets a valve control module. So to explain this, let's take a little field trip. Let's hop in, let's get in the back of the old Jerry bus and do a little Jerry and I, the engineer guy, a little experiment. Come on, come on with me. Hey guys, welcome to Jerry's Garden. To show you how a valve control module works. I have this hose right here. Imagine this hose is air and it's coming in your intake, right? The air is just coming out like that, right? Imagine my finger is a plate and the plate is inside the intake runners. Well, when I put my finger over the air like, over the air like this, it begins to disperse the air. It creates more turbulent air and that means that it's easier for the engine to burn that. Now another thing that makes this Veloster in such a fun car is that you can slam through the shifties with a six speed manual. Mm, 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 mm. Yes, you can opt out and get a seven or even an eight speed dual clutch transmission if you wanted, but Hyundai, they didn't want to take away the option for what drivers love most, right? That's banging through the gears a little bit. And they even put a bit of technology that make that six speed manual even better. And it's probably one of my most favorite pieces of tech in this entire car, and that's rev matching. Now rev matching is the technique of downshifting smoothly by raising the engine speed before you engage the clutch to allow for much cleaner gear change. And it's mainly used when racing, but it's still useful when you're driving around the streets and it's fun to do. And the reason you do it, it reduces the stress on the engine. It prevents an aggressive shift of weight forward when you downshift and it reduces the amount of wheel lock. If you don't know what wheel lock is, Felipe, roll that clip of these wheels locking up. Now with the Veloster N, it can actually do this for you if you want. With a push of a button, the car will automatically blip the throttle for you, raising the revs as you downshift into a lower gear. This is super cool for any car, let alone a Hyundai. And yes, 370Z does it, Civic Type R does it, but those cost more money and it's cooler when it's cheaper. So thank Macklemore for that. He has that song, what's it called? Uh, thrift store? I'm cool. <laughs> now another cool techie piece related to the engine are the engine pots. Pop, 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 pop. A Veloster N has an active exhaust system. A butterfly valve in the tailpipe is controlled by a servo motor that rotates that valve. And when the valve is only partially open, it quiets the exhaust for a more silent ride. But in sport mode, the valve is open and the exhaust is allowed to flow freely, increasing those sweet exhaust sounds. Not only that, but you get those nasty pops and crackles. And those pops are made when there's a detonation echoing in the exhaust. And in race cars, this is usually when unburned fuel touches the hot exhaust. But in the case of the Veloster N, you have a detonation happening earlier in the system and then reverberating through the exhaust. And it comes from the factory like that. And you can alter it. You don't want those pops? Push the button, it goes quiet. You, you wanna show off to all the ladies coming to a stop sign? You know ladies love those pops. The bigger the pop, the bigger the pop. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Why do you think they call Notorious B.I.G. Big Papa? I love it when you call me Big Pop 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 Pop. <laughs> so we got a peppy engine with some sounds. Sound like a race car. Check. What about the handling of the Veloster N? How did the engineers improve that aspect? And it's all in the electronics. <laughs> Now, electronically controlled suspension has been around for a long time. We could do an entire episode on suspension engineering in theory alone, but for the sake of this video, I'll do a quick explain like I'm eight. Now, shocks 
and struts are in the simplest of terms they're just oil pumps okay they're designed to dampen the movement of the spring and stop excessive bounce and oscillation and inside a shock there's a piston attached to the end of a piston rod which works against hydraulic fluid and as the suspension travels up and down the hydraulic fluid is forced through small holes inside the piston because those holes only allow a small amount of fluid through them, the piston is slowed, which in turn slows down spring and suspension movement. Pretty cool. And what makes this design so ingenious is that they automatically adjust to various road conditions. For example, the faster the suspension moves, the more resistance they provide. It's harder to push that fluid through the tiny hole quicker, which in turn provides more dampening resistance. It in the spring is what prevents the shock from bottoming out. Now, electronic struts have a small electric actuator motor mounted either atop the unit or inside that opens or closes those small holes in the piston valve. And this changes the stiffness of the shock as it travels through its stroke, which in turn changes how the car handles. The Veloster N has multiple modes that allow changes in how stiff and how soft the suspension is. Now, when you're on the track, for example, you want your suspension to be stiff. You want to keep the power to the ground and you want to prevent body roll. But when you're driving down the terribly maintained LA streets or gravel roads or wherever there's a bunch of potholes and bumps, you want your suspension to absorb all those bumps and make it more plush. But there's even more tech to it. There's a control module for the electronic dampeners that takes data from the wheels and the body position of the car and even the braking system. And then it monitors that data and then adjusts the suspension to reduce dive when braking. That's going this way. To control roll when cornering. That's this way. And to limit the amount of rear end compression during hard acceleration. That's this way. Pretty neat tech coming from a Hyundai. Now the second bit is the Veloster's ELSD. Groovy man, far out man. Oh dude, I'm tripping balls man. I'm just kidding, LSD stands for limited slip differential and the E stands for electronic. And an LSD among other things, limits the amount of wheel spin under power. It redistributes power to the wheels with the most grip. And they do that either mechanically or electronically or a little bit of both. And you want this because you want to maintain traction, right? It's pretty obvious. And the Veloster N continuously monitors input for various wheel sensors. And if it detects slippage of any of those wheels, it will transfer extra torque to the wheel with the most traction. That improves traction when you're accelerating out of a corner, for example, and it also helps maintain stability. And again, with the push of a button, you can alter how aggressive those settings are. Now, I mentioned earlier that this car has some BMW M DNA under the hood, and that DNA is from this guy, Albert Bierman. Now, he was a former BMW racing engineer and head of the M car division for BMW, but now he's the head of R&D for the Hyundai N brand. This dude is responsible for some of the greatest cars to ever be made. When Bierman began developing the Veloster N, he laid out a set of rules which he and his engineers had to stick to while they were developing the Veloster. They needed a peppy engine, check. They needed a tight chassis with good handling, check. They needed performance brakes, check. We didn't even talk about them, but they made some brakes in-house that rivaled Brembo's. Pretty cool. Finally, let's talk about one of the coolest aspects of this car, and that's the price. Now this car with a performance package costs less than $30,000. That's pretty nuts. That's over $6,000 less than a Type R and over $10,000 less than a Golf R. Now this is a bargain of a car and to everyone I've gotten to talk to and who's driven one, they are crazy fun. So do you guys have a favorite hot hatch out there? Is a Civic Type R better? I don't know, go watch this episode of Up To Speed then come back and tell me what you think. It, it'd be tight, it'd be tight. I, 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 don't, I don't know. Go watch Up To Speed, come back. I'll be in the comments in the first hour of this video. Write me a message. If you make me laugh, I'll love your comment. Bye for now. <laughs>